When it comes to Riesling, the sky is the limit. You should absolutely taste and try and experiment to find what you like best. Hi, I'm Nabila Rauji. I'm a sommelier and wine educator here in Toronto. You can find me teaching courses at George Brown College and here at Som Factory. We're gonna try some Rieslings today, so let's go taste some wine. Riesling is a grape that comes to us from Germany. It thrives in cool climates. It needs to be somewhere where it has a long, long time that it gets to ripen over. And it's grown all over the world, not just in Germany. So we see it in Ontario, we see it in New Zealand, and cool climate pockets around the world. Uh, it is actually a grape that we do very well here in Ontario. So today I've chosen a German Riesling, and then we can look at two Ontario Rieslings that are done in very different styles. It's fantastic. It's light, it's relatively inexpensive. You can keep it in your fridge and it goes with just about anything you'd be making during the week. It's low in alcohol. I try to always have some on hand because there's always a good excuse to drink Riesling. Okay, so if Riesling is made in all of these different styles, how do you know what you're gonna get in the bottle? And thankfully, the Germans who are super organized have come up with an entire system in order to tell us. So if you look at a bottle of especially German Riesling, you're going to see a set of terms that tell you what to expect, whether it is dry, whether it's gonna be a little bit sweet, or whether it's something you might pair better with dessert. So if you look on a bottle of German Riesling like this, you're gonna see two label terms right on the bottom. In this case, it says Cabinet Trocken. So this is telling us that this wine has gotten nice and ripe and I'm expecting lots of great fruit flavor on this wine, but it's also been made in a dry style, which is what Trocken means. So on the back labels is a great place to start because most winemakers are gonna tell you what style of wine is in the bottle. The other thing that's really handy is the LCBO has sweetness descriptors and style descriptors on the label for each of the wines. So you can also use that as a guide, but generally speaking, if you see something that's 10% alcohol, it's probably gonna have a little bit of sugar left in it and it's just meant to be enough to balance out the bright acidity of the wine and to enhance the natural fruit flavors that are coming through in that wine style. The drier styles are gonna have a little bit higher alcohol, so you might see something more living around 12 or 13% on that label, and that's meant to be a little bit bigger, more mineral driven and dry. So we're gonna start with our German Riesling today since that is the home base for Riesling. Let's sip some wine. So you'll notice that it's super light in color. We just kind of have a pale straw, silvery kind of wine in the glass. Totally clear, you can see through it. it smells really lovely. It's already kind of leaping out of the glass at you. It smells a lot like a fresh green apple. Uh, definitely something that feels like it's going to be refreshing. Exactly what I wanna drink on a patio. So next we're gonna move on to a Riesling from here in Ontario. This is the Quarry Road Vineyard Riesling by Taz. It is a 2020, and this is here from in Niagara. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to what we just had with our German Riesling. Let's see what we find on the nose. This has got beautiful, lovely aromatics. It's already super expressive, absolutely endless options with this wine. Okay, so this next Riesling we have is also from here in Ontario. This is by Rosewood Winery. Uh, they are based in Niagara, and this is one of their sort of really fun um, editions of Riesling. This has been aged and made in a little bit of a unique way, and it's kind of bottled with this lovely label under a wax capsule. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this and see what we have inside. So as you can see, we've got a little bit more color here already compared to some of our lighter styles of Riesling. And this is partly because of age. We have a 2018 here, but also the way that this was made, it was, the wine was put into a mix of big oak barrels as well as clay amphora. And that was so that oxygen could reach the wine and letting this wine breathe while it's aging is gonna help it develop into this just beautiful, rich, savory, and complex um, wine with a real sort of mineral salty character to it. 
So in 2020, I was one of seven women who came together to found Vinequity. Uh, we founded this organization dedicated to providing educational and training opportunities to BIPOC wine professionals across Canada. Looking to level up your wine knowledge? Check out George Brown's Advanced Wine and Beverage Business Management course. Cheers! Give me 30 seconds to yeah. think about how I'm going to think it through. Yeah. <laughs>